Welcome to episode 157, Sheldon Addison, part 2, Casino King of the World. This is an outline of episode 157. This is a recap how he was born poor and made $500 million. He is a late comer and a late boomer in the casino business. He bought Sands Hotel in 1988 at the age of 55. The most important thing is to understand his business philosophy, which can be summarized in two sentences. First, do things that others won't do. Second, change the status quo. How can you achieve your dreams? I'll tell you the secret, but nobody ever follows it. Just do things, dip, just do things in life the way other people don't do that. Change the status quo, and then you'll succeed. And I've said that a thousand times, nobody listens. He bought Sands Hotel in 1988 for $110 million. First, he needed the land to build the world's largest convention center for his booming computer trade show, Comdax. Then, almost by accident, he had to get a gaming license. Before you sold Comdex? In 88. I 88. signed the agreement in 88, and I bought it, and it closed in 89. Cool. You can tell us what inspired you to get into the gaming industry with your purchase of the Sands in 1988 and the subsequent construction of this uh, facility. Actually, at that time, I was in the trade show business. Right. And I uh, developed, I had a vision for uh, creating a show I called Comdex, which was an acronym for Computer Dealers Expo. And uh, I had, uh, it grew exponentially, so fast, it quadrupled from the first year to the second year. And so I needed to find a piece of land, but typically they, they were very slow, the, the municipal authorities. So I decided that I would go and buy a piece of land to build my own exhibitions. So I needed a hotel that had enough land to build a million square foot convention center which at that time turned out to be the largest convention center in the country. Mm -hmm. So it was more about... And which is what I did. It was more, more about, about getting the land for the convention. Then he raised the old Sands Hotel to the ground. It was sad that he got the idea of building a Venetian resort while honeymooning with his second wife Miriam in Venice. वो दोनों हनीमून मनाने इटली में वेनिस गए थे और मिरियम को इस शहर से प्यार हो गया था. लास वेगस ट्रिप पर इस नए मेगा स्ट्रक्चर के निर्माण की शुरुआत नवंबर 1996 में हुई. Addison first hit jackpot when he built the Venetian in Las Vegas. Next, he expanded into Macau in 2004. Macau is an 11 square mile enclave on the southern coast of mainland China. For over and so it was clear to me that if I just picked up Vegas, so I decided that I'll just reproduce the strip the way it was built here over there. Sixty-two Chinese businessman Stanley Ho was the first to usher in a new era of casinos in Macau. For decades, Ho built a gambling empire that raked in billions. He's the one who will conquer Macau. They vastly predicted and wrongly predicted that I, I wouldn't even open. I'd never get it built, and if I got it built, I won't open. And if I opened, I'd be in bankruptcy immediately. They didn't want to believe that somebody else could do they something better than they did, right? They grossly underestimated him. What is the Kotai Strip? Well, there was no land for in Macau for him to develop his Las Vegas Strip. Instead, it was just marsh water when the Macau government showed Adelson. What are we going to do? First, the next thing is to build our dream over here. It's a big day. As many 
of Edelson's peers have noted, it's his very success in Macau that has unwittingly left Vegas in the dust, a point not lost on the billionaire. Did you ever think that Macau was going to surpass Las Vegas oh, yeah. in the way it has? Yes. What convinced you? Well, when we first uh, uh, applied in Macau in 2002, there was two and a half billion in gross gaming income. By 04, when we opened the sands, five and a half billion. Five and a half billion. Right, in two years. And he built Marina Bay Sands in Singapore. When it opened in 2010, it was the most expensive resort in the world, estimated at eight billion dollars. Forces it to build its largest leisure and entertainment hub to date on a small tract of reclaimed waterfront land. That is by far the largest and most expensive single project we've ever undertaken. It'll cost about five to 5.5 billion U.S. dollars. It's a lot of money. Now, I know a billion dollars doesn't buy what it used to, but by any measurement, it's a lot of money today. Singapore's Marina Bay Sands is one of the world's most complicated construction projects. Engineers have to build not one, but three skyscrapers that will shoulder a sky park as big as an aircraft carrier. Worst case scenario. A 60 meter tall art science museum is designed for maximum visual impact. It will be to Singapore what the Opera House is to Sydney. And then came the financial crisis of 2008. The financial crisis saw credit dry up and Sands was badly hit. You had to pump $1 billion of your own personal wealth to save the company from bankruptcy. Were you alarmed by how close the company came to collapse in 2008? No. You didn't even flinch? No. Not the least bit worried? No. Why? Because I knew I had the money and I was willing to put it in. I had picked up $3 billion. It was the largest secondary in history a couple of years earlier. So whatever that made, plus that, minus the taxes we paid. So we had plenty of money, my family, and we, were, we knew we were willing to put the money in. So why would, I, why would I flinch? How do I think it was going to grow? Because there was 1.3 billion Chinese. In 2010, he finally realized his dream of building an integrated resort that does not use the casino as the hub. It's the first integrated resort that doesn't use the casino as the hub. And then everything else is off the casino. It's a separate building. And you could tour, it's about nine and a half, say 10 million square feet. And you could tour nine and a half million square feet, never see the half million square feet of the casino or the building. So it's not the hub and the spoke that has been the, the dogma. We're looking to build integrated resorts, two each in Japan, Korea, Vietnam, but Taiwan is sort of late in catching up. Uh, there is pending legislation in the other three, in the other three countries in the, in the Far East, in the Pacific region. Uh, what have I learned today? First, Las Vegas, second, Macau, third, Singapore. Each time he was putting up iconic buildings three times larger than his rivals. And he revolutionized the casino industry. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and leave your comments and questions below. My next video will be Sheldon Adelson, 12 Business Lessons. Wishing everyone peace and prosperity.